Good morning, Dan, and thank you for coming on this morning. We really appreciate it. So Thanks for having me on. You work for a company called Ascent of Ireland, and I know you do business development training. So Correct. if you could let us know a little bit about what you're going to be talking about this morning. Yeah, I think what I, the challenge we always had and over the years was getting people, companies especially, and especially the hospitality sector, to stop and pause. Because they were trying to get out there and win business, but they just weren't giving themselves enough time to say, right, okay, who exactly is my target market? Because remember, niche is good. You develop a fan base that's either going into your shop or your hotel or what. You develop a fan base, and they, it's word of mouth, and it's an awful lot of it's word of mouth. Yes, then we have to couple that with social media activities. I'm a great believer in social media, but the st real strong part of marketing your business is word of mouth. So we're going to look at, for a couple of minutes, on working smarter. And if you look at the first slide here, <laughs> this is probably uh, where your sales office is at the moment. Somebody's tearing their hair out, and then, Someone is there on the right-hand side, cool, calm, collected, and say, right, okay, we can walk through this. So the first thing we need to identify is our low-picking fruit. Where exactly can we get cash flow again when we open? What can we do? Um, because we tend not to forget this part. Take this inside of that red circle. Just take that, that is all the market available to you when we open. And we have two approaches. One is that we continue with our social media activities, um, our blogs, our vlogs, our podcasts, all this good stuff. Get it in there, out there, into the mix. But there's one thing we must remember there's only a portion of the marketplace in a position to buy at any given time. Now, we have two approaches. You have the reactive approach, which is you throw out all your social media, really good content, and you hope that something sticks. You hope that someone sees um, a post or hears a podcast and maybe books uh, your mm -hmm. hotel or your, your, your business. That's reactive. But unfortunately, the one thing we must do now is be proactive. So we need to be specific on exactly the type of target market we're looking for. And let me explain that maybe in a bit more detail. Take these two images, and you're going, where in the name of God is he going with this one? If you take the image on the left, we're talking about specific target market here now. The person on the left is a fisherman, and he catches a net, stands at the end of the pier, he throws out the net, pulls it back in, probably gets six rocks, three bikes, and he done trolley, because he is not being specific. He's just throwing out any old net and see does something happen. But if you take the image on the right-hand side, now there's a fisherman, he or she, they're looking for monkfish. They know exactly where the monkfish is. They have a specific net for catching monkfish. That's why they're so successful. Now, that's what I mean by a specific target market. I've seen too many times, especially in the hotel sector, where you ask, where's your target market? Anyone that eats, drinks, or sleeps. You know, all well and good, absolutely. But in the challenging times that we're going to have, we need to be specific. If anyone of you listening to this webinar is interested in reading, I would strongly recommend a book called Phenocracy. It was written by David Melman Scott. He was one of the keynote speakers at the Pendulum Summit in Dublin uh, just last January. 
it's really interesting where you set up a fan base and you build from there. So that's your specific target market. So where do we get this target market? Where are we talking to people? Business is closer to you than you think. So who can we have an easy conversation with? Remember, everyone has 250 contacts. Now, I know what you're going to jump in and say, oh, for God's sake, he's going to get us to um, ring everybody. So everybody has to ring everybody. No, that is not being specific. What we want to do is we want to identify who is in our target market. Like, I had a very good story a couple of years ago where we were doing this exercise in a hotel. And we just asked around who's involved in who, what networks are you involved in? And we had this girl in reception that was involved in a judo club. So he goes, that's very interesting. So what we said to her was, if you ever see an opportunity um, that they're looking for a, a hotel to do something, you might think of uh, us. So she was at um, one of their meetings and it came up that the All Ireland Judo competitions were to be held in that town uh, for the next two years. So our receptionist heard this and goes, ah, would you mind if our sales manager gave you a buzz? So with, just with that referral, they got the hotel full for a whole weekend for judo competitions, all bedrooms full, and guess what? They got it for the second year as well. That business was just sitting there. And the one thing we keep forgetting, that the buyer, in other words, the actual market themselves, they love to get a place recommended to them. We tend to miss that point. That's why the referral is so important. But here's where it gets really interesting. You see there now that you have, you're connected with so many networks. Everybody has 250 contacts, but watch this. They in turn have 250 contacts. So now you have a massive market available to you. All you got to do is ask. That was one of the things when we spoke to staff after that uh, never realized you were involved in the, the judo club. And the answers we got back was, you never asked. You know, and it's it's a thing that we really should think about, you know. Then gathering all that information, it's very, very simple. This is super simple stuff. A simple Google Docs, staff member, network, contact name. Is it okay to give that contact and the network a call? That's a very important question. You must ask your referral source, is it okay to give them a call? Then you put in the contact name and you put in the results. This is super simple. And just to finish up, for those of you who want the science behind the theory, this is called the law of diffusion of innovation. This is fact that you have different types of people habits, you know, that you have the first two and a half percent of the innovators. They're the Steve Jobs of this world. You know, they're just a way ahead. Then you have the early adapters, 13 and a half percent of the marketplace of the early adapters. Now, they're your fan base. They're your loyal customers. They're your staff. They're your friends, your colleagues. They just get you. They get what you do. Um, and no matter what you say, they go, okay, the next tranche of people are the early majority. They're 34%. They're defined by the fact that they just keep an eye on the first 13.5% and see how they're doing. There's where your market is in, the early majority. So it's doing video testimonials or getting people in the 13.5% slot to recommend you to the early majority. The late majority... They would be people that would buy an iPhone or an Android over the last two years because they just cannot get that Nokia uh, 6210 anymore. They will never be your marketplace. And that's why I keep saying to people, when you're just 
uh, re expecting a reactive market, you go out there and they will never become your client. So that is to wrap it up. That's just over 10 minutes. Um, I'm conscious that I'm not going over time. So if you want any more information, please, please feel free to give me a buzz or drop me an email and we will help you. And guys, it's, it's easier than you think. Thanks, Anne. Thanks very much for that, Dan, uh, giving us a lot to think about. We really appreciate that. And you'll stay on now for, there'll be some questions and answers. So thank you oh, for good. that. Great.